Is it too early to put Lamar Jackson in the Ravens Mount Rushmore? What do the Ravens need to do to fix their defense? Is Hollywood the best Ravens receiver of all time? These and many, many more questions on this episode of NFL Questions from Subscribers. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it, how to made it. Well, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's Sing Raven here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subs a series where you can ask me any question you want to and we answer it in a video just like this if you want to be part of NFL questions from subs you can send me an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com or for the patrons you know you can send it directly on patreon and, and a lot of y'all send it directly on patreon and we're gonna get to it in a little bit and if you want to become a team keep it clean patron you can go to patreon.com slash vids. If you don't want to, then don't go to uh, patreon.com slash vids. I love y'all. This is the very first episode of NFL Question from Subscribers. After the crazy, dramatic, just stressful, but happy win that they got against the Indianapolis Colts on Monday Night Football from the crib. I love y'all. Y'all brought some fire questions like y'all do every single time. Let's do it. First question came from my guy, Leave P, and appreciate you being a patron. Lee, he said, hello, engraving blessings to you and the family. Question, I know he's still young in his career, but does Lamar make the Ravens Mount Rushmore? I got Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, Jonathan Ogden, and I'm torn between LJ and Suggs for that fourth spot. What say you? Also, what are your top five Lamar Jackson games of his career thus far? Oh, wow, this is a loaded question. Um, mm, when Lamar wins the Super Bowl, He'll be there for sure. Um, right now, I mean, it all depends on your preference. If you feel like he's somebody, if you feel like he's somebody since his impact has obviously been super crazy uh, with the Ravens, if you feel like he can go on there right now, okay, cool. And if you feel like, no, it's a little too early, okay, cool. Me, I don't even know. I'm like right in the middle. Because Lamar, like, he, he has like... The impact, again, the impact is crazy. What he's brought to this team as far as play, as far as attention, as far as the vibe, it's just, it's wild. But I, for Mount Rushmore right now, um, man, mm, it's it's tough. I, I would say a very, very, very tough no right now. But you know, with everything that he's been doing, he is well on his way. He's well on his way. Now, Ravens mess around and get that Super Bowl this year? Oh, hey, Lamar, you, you go ahead and you have a little seat at Mount Rushmore for the Ravens. <laughs> anyway, the second question. Top five Lamar Jackson games of his career thus far? Um, well, in no particular order. And it's just off the top of my head. One of them would definitely be uh, last night's game. Because last night, it just proved just so much, man. Um, and he clutched it out. Uh, another one would be this year against the Chiefs because it was like they they finally did it. They finally did it. They finally got over that hurdle that they just haven't been able to get over for so long. Another one would definitely be uh, week one, 2019, against the Dolphins, um, the five touchdown special. Uh, another one would probably be uh, against the Rams in 2019, that Monday night football game, because that was a game where I just – I'm like, man, these Rams, Aaron Donald and them, I'm just, I was worried about that game big time. Um, and a fifth one, mm, I don't know, man, this is tough. Uh, I might go with the Seahawks game, the Ravens versus the Seahawks, because I definitely picked them to lose that one. I said that they were going to lose by at least 10. They were going to lose by at least two scores. Um, and they proved me all the way wrong, and that was just such a big turning point, not only for that season, but I think really for the Ravens as a whole, for Lamar Jackson's career. Uh, just that confidence boost. Oh, another one, too, would be the game against uh, the 49ers in 2019. The Bills one was really good in 2019 against the Bills. It's a lot, man. To, but to really consolidated down to five that would be really hard for me because y'all know i hate top five lists next question came from my guy leonard who's also a patron appreciate it he said ain't grave and hope all is well with you and the fam big shout out to carter so my question is since we so strapped for cash <laughs> any word on that 10 mil from earl thomas i think our d might need a little help uh yeah the defense has been they, they they've been strange this year because, again, you got to think about it. last night in the Colts game, the offense didn't help them out for the longest. They didn't help them out. If the offense would have been what the offense was early on, then the defense would have been in much better shape, I think. But 
they the defense held the Colts to 10 points in the first half. 10 points, that's it. That's good. 10 points. But then but they were getting like the 10 points is kind of misleading. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, points is what matters the most. But the offense, the Colts offense was moving the ball on them literally all day long. All day long. Um but yeah, we haven't heard anything about that grievance with Earl Thomas yet. So yeah, that 10 mil is looking like it's gonna be taken from the Ravens, I think, uh, next year. Next question came from my boy Mike, who's also a patron. Appreciate you, Mike. He said, Hey Graven, how are you doing during these nail biter games? Same way we are doing, just a little bit crazy. You gotta be a little bit crazy to deal with these games on a consistent basis like this. He said, Lamar continues to impress and the passing game looks fantastic. However, I do have concerns about injuries and defense. I think we all have concerns about both of those two, especially the latter. He said, what do you think our guys have to do to fix the defense? Do we need to bring in Ray Lewis and Ed Reed for coaching? What are your thoughts? Um, I, it's just fundamentals. Straight up, fundamentals. Tackling. Tackling, tackling, tackling. I think that is the biggest issue with this Ravens defense is poor tackling. That's it. They remember how to tackle again, they get back to the basics, then I think they'll be in much better shape. Next question came from my guy John, who's also a patron. Appreciate you, John. He said, hey, Graven, I hope you're having a blessed day. I just finished seeing your video on the expectations that we should have as Ravens fans for Rashad Bateman. And I believe it's going to be a similar process that J.K. Dobbins went through. Uh-oh. He said he didn't start right away and was slowly integrated into the offense until he was ready. The way our receivers are playing and getting open does allow for the Ravens to slowly integrate Rashad Bateman into the offense. What do you think? And that's a very good observation that you make with that because since our receivers are doing so well right now, since our passing game is doing so well right now, that alleviates a lot of the pressure that will be on a first round draft pick, Rashad Bateman, to have to come in and be the savior for the offense. He doesn't have to do that. So that makes his job that much easier and allows him to ease his way in instead of having to jump in and be like, all right, I'm ready to save the day. So thank you, TT and Kiki and Jiro for all working well together. Next question came from my guy Raven Pride, who's also a patron. Appreciate you. He said, what's going on in Raven? I hope you and your family are on good health. I wanted to comment on the NFL about giving Adafi away a fine for the hit on Teddy Bridgewater. This was totally an unfair punishment, and I believe we have time and time made complaints about all the late hits on Lamar, and nothing has been done about it. The NFL has proven they will continue to target the Ravens for anything they feel they can. I also feel the NFL has no respect for the city of Baltimore because they have plotted to not return football back to a city that was having a heavy crime rate. But they continue to prey on a city that has one of the strongest fan bases in the NFL. So, um, the hit with Adafi away, uh, he did make contact with the helmet. Um, and I think the fine was just more so, not even necessarily an attack on Adafi away. I just think it was just uh, a, a warning shot. Because it wasn't a malicious hit. It wasn't like it was an intentional hit. It wasn't targeting anything like that. It's just one of those things that happen. A bang-bang play, and it happens in football. Um, so I think the fine was more so not an attack on the Ravens or anything like that. I think it was just like, hey, you can't do that. It's just a little little light fine for you. Just don't do not do it again. Just just try to be careful. Even though it is football, so it's hard to be careful in football. Um but with as far as everything else, it's crazy because, again, in last night's game against the Colts, they actually had called a rough in the passer on Lamar Jackson. And when, when they called it, I just I couldn't believe it. I know a lot of y'all couldn't believe it either. Um, so maybe things are starting to finally turn around. Next question came from my guy, Grant, who is also a patron. Appreciate you, Grant. He said, uh, Graven, has there ever been a team in the NFL history that had three defensive players uh, of the year on the same team at the same time? Uh, with Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, and Terrell Suggs. They all have been in a defense um, and in 2012 because Suggs won it the year before. Just wanted to know the answer to that. Mm, that is a, uh, a a very good question. And I don't know, that that because that's tough. Like, on, on the same team at the same time? I don't think so, but I don't know. Because, like, initially, I, I, the reason I would say I don't think so because... Like, teams have obviously had different defensive players of the years, but to have all three of those guys be able to still play together, uh, oof, that, that's, that's something right there. 
So I don't think so, but I will have to double check. Next question came from my boy Brandon B. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope all is well with you and the fam. Now, do you think after the Colts game, we can start to say Hollywood is the best Ravens receiver of all time? Time. I know this is a bit of a stretch saying this since he's only in his third season, but he's been playing outstanding so far this season, and he's on pace to break 1,000 receiving yards and possibly more. Thank you, and hashtag team keep it clean. Hmm. Now, when, when you say Ravens best receiver of all time, for this you have to be pretty spe specific because some people could say that's Derek Mason. Some people could say that's Anquan Bolden. Um, and... I think when, when you say that, you mean maybe the best Ravens drafted receiver of all time. Um, and when you think about that, you think about a lot of guys that they've been through, the Tandon Doss, the Clarence Moores, Demetrius Williams, Mark Clayton, Travis Taylor, uh, Brashad Perryman, um, there's Miles Boykin too more recently, guys like Duvernay and Prochet. Um, and I mean, the, the list, it goes on, but when you talk about the receivers that they drafted, that's a conversation that we could have. Is it, and it, yeah, like you said, it is very early. But um, and then there's Tory Smith, of course, too. Can't forget about Tory. Um, but yeah, that that's a conversation that we could have. And it's something when you like initially when you hear it, best receiver, well, what? But then when you think about it, it's like, hold up, yeah, we 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 gotta have this talk. The next question came from my guy Solomon. He said, I ain't grave an amazing game. One question from it, though. I understand we've had so many injuries and struggles by individual players like Anthony Averett, Patrick Queen, and Malik Harrison. But do you think there might be an issue with Wink's scheme? Maybe our incredible running game and time of possession from past seasons helped cover issues with his defensive scheme and play calling. I, I do agree with that part, that the a, a great offense, it, it helps out the defense a lot because if your offense, they putting up all these points over and over and over again, then that makes it easier for your defense. And that makes the opposing team's offense, if they're not putting up points like your offense, that makes them one-dimensional. So it makes everything run that much smoother. Uh, but anyway, it's easy to be aggressive on defense when your offense is consistently or constantly milking the clock and giving opposing offenses less drives to work with. This year is showing that we haven't been able to adjust defensively at all. Can't be all due to missing Peters and Fort. Hmm. Oof, so is it the issue with uh with Wink's scheme? I uh his scheme is obviously very complicated. Um it is very blitz heavy, it is very aggressive. Um I don't think it's the biggest issue. I think the biggest issue is just fundamentals, really. We said it earlier, but Ravens have not been tackling well. They haven't been tackling well. Because, I mean, we look look at games like look early on in games like uh, the Raiders game, even in the Chiefs game, they got some nice stops on the, on the Chiefs. Um, in the Lions game, they were holding it down with the offense, which just took forever to wake up. Um, and then, of course, all the drops and stuff. The Broncos game, they held it down for all game except literally just one drive, and that was it. But the rest of the game, they, they held it down. So it's just it's one of those things where when things are working, they're working. When they're not, they're not. Um but overall, this year has been is early on. It works, but then as the it, it feels like teams are adjusting to wink scheme. That's what it seems like to me. It seems like in the second half of games, teams are like, oh, "Okay, let's fix this. Let's fine tune that. Oh, let's do this," and, and it's been working. Um, and, and with wink scheme, it, it seems like like there's been a lack of adjustment sometimes. Um, so it's. It's something to just monitor. Hopefully, it's just a, a, a quick little five-game problem, and then for the rest of the games, we'll be good to go. But uh, it is something that is a bit concerning. Um, but now the injuries, they, they do definitely help with make it with – they help with the Ravens struggling. Because, um, again, Marcus Peters, your number one corner, is out. Well, your number two corner, one A, one B, whatever, he's out. Uh, LJ Ford, very smart uh, inside linebacker, he's out. Um, so you, uh, that's a problem. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think it's something that we just got to watch for, uh, moving forward and just hope that again, like I said, that the adjustments, that's the biggest thing with me, uh, that when the opposing team, when they adjust to what you're doing, then you got to make sure you adjust, uh, even better. And, and they did that in, in some of the game. Like I said, the Broncos game, 
they they took care of business throughout except that one drive um but in a cheese game they what was it that they didn't give up any second half points or no no or no points in the fourth quarter i forgot what it was whatever it was but that that showed that adjustment right there so it's just it's it's important that wink find what his weaknesses are what the team's weaknesses are and just really work on them again my, my thing their biggest weakness to me the the running backs catching passes out of the backfield that is a killer for ravens defense all day every and just screens in general too even wide receiver screens tight end screens screens have been killing the ravens for a long time so that and and just again fundamental stuff tackling screens screens and tackling well tackling and screens because i would put tackling as number one um but as far as scheme stuff because tackling is not scheme a scheme thing but i would say uh yeah definitely the screens and Sometimes just situational play calling. I'm not one of the people that's gonna be like, "All right, when you need to stop blitzing, don't blitz at all. Don't blitz. No, you, you can't do. You can't do that. It's situational football, man. So sometimes you should blitz, sometimes you shouldn't. But just knowing the right time to dial it up. And the last question on this episode, a question from Subs came from Gabe. He said, "Hey, Graven, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Hope you're doing good too." So I got a question about our run defense. Going into the Colts game, we had all of our starters on the defensive line going up against a banged up offensive line. And yeah, I was saying it during the stream that I didn't even know that Quentin Nelson was out. I had no idea that he was out, and they still ran all over us. They controlled that game. Mm, yeah, it was a big yikes. Anyway, he said, that being said, the Colts still managed to run the ball down our throats when we are usually a top-run defense. Do you see this as a concern for the future? Yes. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, and he said, is a solution to activate Josh Bynes or maybe sign and trade for a linebacker? Hope this wasn't too long. Let's go Ravens. Oh, man. Um Josh Bynes, he he could help, but I don't even think it's I don't even think it's something that we could just go out and get some player for. Um, I think it's got to be something that just happens from within uh, the, the, with people that are already here, um, and it's about just wrap up tackling, wrap up tackling, and because if you if you fail to do the basic stuff, if you can't do the basic stuff well, then when you get to the complicated stuff you're definitely not going to be able to do that either because it starts with the basics. So Ravens got to get that in order, uh, and then this defense, they'll really be able to just take it up notch by notch every week. Hey.